Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about tunnel assay. Now, what does that mean? Tunnel assay. It's nothing to do with tunnel. Uh, the terms comes like that so that we can memorize it pro properly. Uh, the full form of this assay is though it's not important, but I'm telling you because uh, once you know the full form, you will kind of know the process. It is uh, T stands for TDT, terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase. U stands for DUTP, N stands for NIC, A, E stands for END, L stands for labeling. So, terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase DUTP NIC end labeling assay. It's a mouthful of name. So, never try to mug up things. Why I remember this, I am telling you. And once you know the process, I am sure that you remember this name because it's easy to remember. You don't need to mug up this. The idea here is very easy. Why we do tunnel assay? This is an assay to detect the apoptosis of the cell or whether the cell is dying or not, right? Remember, in the apoptotic phase, it begins with uh, the bulging of all those cell membrane components uh, coming out like a sac as well as after that inside the cell nucleotides are getting degraded nucleic acids are getting degraded so the dna component inside the cell will be cleaved and double stranded breaks will start to form right so in a cell if we find the double stranded break component is higher and higher over time we can tell that that cell is going through apoptosis so to measure whether cell is going through apoptosis or not we can use this tunnel assay right is a kind of apoptosis assay, right? A comate assay is also another type of apoptosis assay, which I have already discussed. And if you want to check the video, you can check that video in my channel or simply search as a comate assay. You will find my video at the top. Now, the thing is, this, this process, how this process actually works, how this assay process actually works. In this case, the idea is very simple. Using this enzyme TDT, terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase. Now, the enzyme TDT has a function of trying to repair double stranded breaks. So, let us say here we have, let us say this is a DNA, we now have a double stranded break out there. So, what TDT can do here, let us say the double stranded break can be of different type, let us say this one. Now, TDT will bind with it and TDT have functions of making this nick. I mean, they will chop some of the nucleotide portion if there is any uneven uh, end and make it a blunt end. This is a very important. They first make it a blunt end. Once the blunt end nick, that means this is the blunt end, this is the overhang, remember? So, once they prepare this blunt end, blunt end of those double stranded break of DNA, then it will start adding DUTP in those terminal region of the DNA. So, what they will add? DUTP. And in this case, the interesting th thing about TDT is that TDT does not require any strand, any template strand to add nucleotide sequence. That is why it is important. TDT is a, you know, template independent nucleotide addition system or addition enzyme. It can add nucleotide that is DUTP. It can add DUTP here at the terminal part of the double stranded uh, blunt ended DNA, but it will no longer require any template strand there. So, what it will do? It will transfer this U, uh, DUTP there at the terminal region, DUTP and they kind of start to form what, he, what we call a loop. So, let us say here, if I draw it slightly larger way, start adding all those U to form a kind of loop like structure and can block the DNA end like this, something like that. So, the actual idea here, they will add DUTP in this location, right? That is how I know. So, if there is double stranded break a lot, TDT will be recruited, TDT will start adding DUTPs there to form a loop like structure to make them closed. Now, the idea here is that during this process, so that means TDT will be recruited a lot when there is breakdown of DNA going on inside the cell. So, inside the cell if there is breakdown of DNA going on, that means the cell is undergoing apoptosis, right? So, 
we can correlate apoptosis with the amount of TDT acting inside the cell, right. So now, what ca we can do is that we simply, we tag this DUTP with either any enzyme or colorimetric material, we either with any enzyme or we can add fluorescent tag with this DUTP. Once we modify this DUTP either tagged with any coloring compound or a fluorescent tag, then what we can see after this process is done in that cell, we can measure this fluorescence and also we can look at the color formation of color in that test sample. So by looking at this test sample, either we can see the fluorescence coming out or the coloration, we can tell that those cells going on apoptosis. Right? They are going through the path of apoptosis because there are a lot of double stranded break in the DNA and there are a lot of TDTs are acting and they are giving us this labeled DUTP at the end of each double stranded blunt end break of the DNA. That's why it's called TDT DUTP nick end leveling assay because TDT will try to form a nick. I mean they try to, uh, they try to add DUTP to the nick. And if we modify DUTP to tag with fluorescence or enzyme or coloring compound, then during this end leveling process by TDT, we can detect the double stranded break in the DNA. And the double stranded breaks present in the DNA, the double stranded break present in the DNA correlates directly with apoptosis. And that is how we can detect whether the cell is going through apoptosis or not, right. That is tunnel assay, right. So that is how it is done. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more technique videos like this and share it with your friends. Thank you.